Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I want to speak about the importance of having a good clean uh, app architecture. Uh, um, what are the pitfalls that come with it? What do you gain in the long term by having one? Uh, so uh, yeah, let's get into it. So yeah, as a general rule, uh, I would say like as a general rule in software development, what you want is that your code is basically not spaghetti code, that you have code separated in layers so that you have a good separation of concern like the UI does only the UI work, the business logic is doing what it's supposed to be doing and then database is all isolated let's say. Uh, this way in the long term it will be much more maintainable as we will be discussing during this uh, video. So. When it comes to apps uh, and Android specifically, because as you may know, I'm an Android developer. So uh, when it comes to Android, uh, you may be having a Kotlin primarily as programming language, uh, perhaps Java or a combination of both. But uh, all in all, uh, in Kotlin, Kotlin you can both program it in an orient object oriented um, object oriented paradigm and uh, and a functional functional paradigm as well. So. Uh, in, in my opinion, I would recommend to strive for using all the functional uh, methods that Kotlin provides because it basically all allows you to, to have more predictability on your code and it makes it less error prone, uh, which is what you want. Uh, so if you try to check online, I will take my, my board here to explain a bit. But uh, if, you, if you try to find like what's a clean architecture, what, is, what does it look like? You will always find this Uncle Bob diagram. So at the very center, it's like a, an onion diagram, as you will see. So in the very center, you have like an entity, or the entities, not very well seen. But yeah, here in the center is basically the entities, and this is basically the raw data as it's coming from the API or blockchain. Then you will have another layer where you have the use cases, and the use cases basically represent the intent uh, of what you want to do with your data. Then you will have another layer, which is like uh, speaking about uh, view controllers, uh, view controllers, view models, I mean, view models, uh, controllers, uh, in the case of yeah, iOS, for instance, uh, presenters you may also have. So basically this layer is uh, what it will be like the business logic layer and um, the view models or the presenters or controllers are basically communicating uh, as we will see with the use cases. Then you will have another layer which is basically the UI or I don't know, databases for instance. So what is important in this diagram, what you need to remember, you need to look at it as, a, as an onion and as an onion basically you will see that you can only communicate with adjacent layers. So the use cases can communicate directly with the entities, the controllers and view models and so on can communicate with the use cases, uh, then the UI with the view model for instance, but you shouldn't be, like the UI code shouldn't be talking directly to the use case for example, or shouldn't be talking to the entity directly. In, instead it should be communicating with this other layer, the view model then communicates the use case, uh, what it wants to do. For instance, very common example, you have a fragment or an activity and there is some buttons there that the user can interact with. So the person will tap on the button, then this button will, let's say, communicate to the view model like the person uh, reacted to this event. So, uh, and in that case will be like, I don't know, fetch user. So uh, when you log in, for example, the fetch user when, when logging in. So then the view model will communicate with the use case uh, that says and specifies like, okay, fetch the user from the repository. Uh, and then from the repository, this might be like, if it's a local repository, it would be like a database or a share preference, for instance. And if it's a, a remote repository, would be an a REST API, a blockchain, or whatever you're communicating basically outside of your mobile. Um, from there, then you fetch 
yeah, in this case, the entity which works the user in my example. But uh, this looks nice, but sometimes it's difficult to grasp like, okay, but what is what and how do I, I put it in the code? So I like to, to show it as well like this. It's much uh, simpler approach, I think. So at first you, have, you will have a presentation layer. Then you will have a domain layer here. And then you will have a data layer. So the data layer uh, has the repositories, as I mentioned. And you can have both local or remote, as I commented now. Uh, then you will have a domain layer, where, which is like the view models, where the view models will be. Uh, this is basically the business logic. Then you will have the presentation, which is the UI. Um, in case of Android, it would be the fragments, the activities, uh, widgets, and so on. So what is important here is that the, the flow goes this way. I mean, you need to try to do it unidirectional. So uh, basically, the user reacts to the, to, the, to the UI. Then from there, you communicate to the view model in the domain layer, like, okay, do this action, execute this code or um, process this data or whatever it might be. Then this probably communicates to the, to the data layer where you will get either um, data from the local repository or the remote repository. Then the data basically comes back, but it's not like you have a mess like from the presentation, you talk directly to the repository, and then from there you talk to the view model, and then the view model, like, you should basically go by layers. So, yeah, this is something to be keeping in mind. And also, uh, like, good, basic, really, like, uh, software design principles, such as uh, solid, um, yeah, it's like a separation of concern, uh, dependency injection and, and so on. Then you also have uh, Yagni, like uh, you ain't gonna need it. Like basically you shouldn't be r optimizing for something that doesn't exist. Like yeah, in the future when we have this and this feature, it will be good to have this interface. I mean, you should just avoid that because that's a typical flow of an engineer, like those traps that you go into some rabbit hole that you were not even needed, uh, needing in, in a, like to begin with. So just focus on, on what you need. Then you also have like, don't repeat yourself, uh, like basically it's reusing the code. Don't try to have the same code or a code that does basically the same in different places because then if there is a bug in that code, you need to go in each of, or each of the places and fix it instead of just fixing it uh, in one place only. Uh, keep it super simple. I try to have basically very small functions that, that, that do only one thing instead of having bigger functions that do several things. Like, uh, as a good indication um, for that is basically if, you're, if your function is called like do x and like if you have some n there, it's already an indication that you're doing too much. It should just be do x, do y, do z, and then all of them should maybe be calling each other, but never be like doing several things at the same time. Uh, and this basically, um, what, what it leads to is what you're looking for is for maintainability, because you need to remember as a software developer, you will be basically just reading code like 80% of your time. The other 20%, yeah, you will be developing new features, uh, fixing bugs and so on. But most of the time you will be just reading code, trying to understand it trying to see what the heck you did six months ago and in some feature. So basically what you need to be doing is when you have this, um, this architecture, good architecture and design principles in place, it becomes very easy because then you can go in the future and see a feature and you will understand very easily what you did, what was the intention uh, and be able to spot bugs and solve them much easier than 
if you had some spaghetti code. Like I remember when I started uh, doing apps for Android back in 2010, uh, when it was like Android Donut, and it was crazy because the framework was very new and uh, there was no like clear guidelines, like Android specific guidelines. So people just used to bulk bunch of coding activities and you will have these typical got objects like this size with 1000 plus lines of code doing everything basically doing ui fetching things from repository like everything so uh, and that's a big problem because then what happens is that new developers come into the project and they will not want to touch that code because it's like so complicated and so difficult to to follow so what they would do is basically create wrappers on top of those things and maybe they will add some some functions to communicate with the rest of the mess uh, and basically you will get what is called like a, a, a rotten code uh, like no one will want to touch this to test it or anything because it's something that if you touch it you will just break the whole app so uh, you don't want to do that because at the end of the day uh, like if you try to just extend this for a long time it will be just easier to rewrite the whole thing from scratch rather than trying to fix it it's like very big problematic um, so as a good example of uh, something that I wanted to mention in Android uh, that the clean architecture something you need to be striving for is composability and uh, in Android there is a very very common use case which is like you have a list and you want to be showing multiple types of items on that list so you have a list like this let's say you have uh, some normal items then you have like a map here and then you will have uh, I don't know an ad because your manager told you oh we need to make some money let's put some Google Ads there so how do you do this like putting multiple types of items there Usually you will have a recycler view and then you will have an adapter and then in the adapter yeah you could do some tricks like do some if else and stuff and check like whether it's this type or that type but it becomes extremely messy very quickly like if you have two types maybe you can go that way but if you have three, three or more you should go a different way and that way is basically uh, having adapter delegates and uh, there is a library called yeah, Adapter Delegates uh, by uh, Hannes Dorfman, I believe. And he basically, what, what it does is that you have the recycler view and you have the adapter. You have the adapter here that you will normally have. But then on top of this, you uh, specify what type of uh, views, let's say, you want to render in this list and you create different delegates for it. So you would say, okay, I want uh, to show an ad, I want to show a map, and I want to show a normal item. So what you do is basically you create an, a delegate for this, a delegate for that and that, and then you basically stock them here on top of that. So it's very easy because then what happens is when Android tries to render these types in the list, it checks in the adapter and the adapter will say instead of using these normal common methods it would just say okay tell me how to paint this uh, I don't know map delegate for instance or item delegate so this this delegate here will tell the adapter how to render it and this to the Android framework so it's very powerful because then if you have like a different list in another part of the app uh, what you can do is you basically reuse these uh, uh, delegates. So you create a different recycler view, perhaps even a different adapter, but you just reuse these uh, delegates. You, didn't, you don't need to do this code twice. And that comes back to the um, code reusing. So very powerful approach. I would recommend it a lot if you're uh, showing multiple types uh, in a list. Uh, but to sum it up, what the good and the clean architecture, uh, what you need to be looking for is basically uh, layer, uh, co code separated by multiple layers, uh, separation, which is basically separation of concerns, uh, dependency injection, um, code reuse, uh, keep things simple. Um, what else, what else? Yeah, I mean, basically uh, these things um, because 
perhaps if you're prototyping very quickly, yeah, you can make some mess and it wouldn't matter. But if you're really, if you're serious about the, the app that you're building, you want to think long term on uh, who will maintain this app, you know. Uh, so you need to think not only for yourself, for, for your own sake, but for the others that are coming after you. So um, leave me comments below what you think about it. And uh, at the same time, think that this, uh, what I spoke about, these uh, guidelines and this uh, Uncle Bob thing, they are basically that, they are guidelines. Um, it's not like you need to follow them religiously, but you should be striving towards that and you should analyze it case by case. Like for instance, maybe in your app, it doesn't really matter to have, I don't know, interfaces between different layers because maybe you see it as a boilerplate and something unnecessary. I don't know, like you need to be basically, uh, yeah, analyzing. Does it make sense to apply this policy here? Yeah, okay, then you implement it. If not, then discard it. Just take what works for you and implement it in your code. So leave me a comment below and in another episode we can check how you can structure something like this in, on Android Studio directly. Uh, so you will see how the packages are structured and, and everything. Thank you, bye bye.